and speed and look forward also Jeet at the back so you've got now five defenders with Balboa coming in as a sweeper to protect against that Nigerian speed and look forward also John Harks will be right in the center of the midfield but the most important thing is the fact that you've got Ernie Stewart and Frankie Klopas in their true positions finally able to play where they normally play very powerful U.S. lineup and a very powerful opponent today in Nigeria, which also, like the U.S., made it to the second round of World Cup 94. We kick off the U.S. Cup 95 from Foxborough. Today's live and uninterrupted ESPN special event is proudly presented to you in part by Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. By MasterCard. MasterCard, it's more than a crush rock in goal. Iroha, number two, will go forward from the back. A very experienced defender is Enwanu. But the attack will come out of J.J. Okocha, who's from Eintracht Frankfurt. He has a contract with Nsiasia, the number 18. Seamus Mallon with us today down on the field in Nigeria. A very muddled situation, Seamus. Well, Nigeria very much in transition after World Cup 94, and not without the usual controversy. Technical advisor. So, a little Brazilian flair has now been added to the power and skill of a Nigerian Team. A day of history today in Foxborough. Thank you, Seamus, as Marcelo Balboa is playing in his 100th match. A presentation being made on the pitch in your position in Holland. He just returned attack scoring 10 goals for his team, Willem, too. This segment of the game is presented commercial-free by Budweiser, and we are underway. The U.S. in white moving from left to right. Balboa at sweeper today behind the four backs, but it's a narrow field, and Thomas Tooley, number five, who just had that touch, expected to move up a little bit today for Steve Sampson's team. And Sampson continuing to state that he wants his team to play attractive soccer, attacking soccer, but of course be alert on defense, so it is that double-edged sword. Ernie Stewart comes back for it, number eight. Algeria couldn't get it. Dooley slips it ahead, and Nigeria on a touch. It's Siasia, number 18, with it. The green-clad Super Eagles of Nigeria, eliminated by Italy in the second round of the World Cup last year. Number three, Abdullahi at right back. Number four, and in heartbreaking, heartbreaking fashion, they were eliminated by Italy, an eventual finalist. But it took an overtime penalty kick by Roberto Baggio. Iroha with a ball. Down went Zaki on the turf in the U.S. in possession. Yes. Sunday Olise, the player who coughed up the ball in that sequence to Baggio, has never played since for the national side of Nigeria. A wealth of soccer experience in Nigeria. The key is the organization. And after the Nigerians lost last year, Clemens Westerhoff, their Dutch coach, did not even ride back with them to the hotel. His job was over. He left. Balboa gets ahead to it. Settled there by Siasia, number 18. You might remember him from last year's team. Dooley comes in and is fouled. Free kick for the U.S. Dooley able to be very aggressive in the tackle there because he knows he has Balboa in behind him. And with those two in tandem, the U.S. very strong now in terms of heading defensively. They've got Dooley as well as Balboa, who can be very dominant in the air. Bliss with the ball. Frankie Klopas, number 14, who had a tremendous run-up to the World Cup offensively. Back from Greece to play this match, it forward. Tackled down. J.J. Okocha, who just had that touch, the singular offensive player, number 10 in green for Nigeria today. Keep an eye on him. He plays with Frankfurt in the first division in Germany. Benedict Aroha, the left back, number two. Throw in for the U.S. Our officials from Canada, John Jerome is the ref. John Godin and Eric Waugh are the linesmen. The fourth official from the United States at Grisendez. Ernie Stewart on a run. Stewart pushed off by Aroha and fouled. Free kick for the U.S. on this narrow field. Ernie Stewart showing that getaway speed as he nearly slipped through the Nigerian defense. Good restart, and the U.S. going to try that today, Ty. Because Nigeria trouble getting themselves set. Now ball back heel, but picked off by Faludu, number 15. But remember, 
in Nigeria's game against Argentina during the World Cup in this stadium. They were victimized twice by Diego Maradona on quick restarts and ended up losing, in fact, that game by a score of 2-1. to one. Both of those goals coming from quick, quick restarts. The United States taking that lesson and hoping to apply that here. In fact, in the last eight games for Nigeria, they've given up six goals for them on set pieces. So, if you're going to beat Nigeria, the quick restart, one way to think about it is that Rojas is taken down. Stewart gets a talking to from John Jerome, our referee. Last year, Nigeria... On the last night, winning its group, 1-1 one one here at Foxborough, as we said, eliminated by Italy, lost a thrilling game that turned physical against Argentina. And so they know this pitch at Foxborough, but these are not the dimensions of the field as Blitz tackles that fall away. It's a much more narrow field than it was for the World Cup when they took out some American football seats. Watch Okocha, he's on the ball there. Just before, he did some really nifty dribbling moves, very confident in the dribble. Brad Friedel in the net gets a foot to it. A coach in number 10 in green. Looking to transfer somewhere in Europe and he's a hot commodity. Siasia number 18. For six is Okara. Baludu lays it back. Balboa gets the foot in. Stewart calmly settles. Sorber with a touch. Well, the U.S. wanted organization on defense. Balboa came through there at the right time, and then Sorber showed the composure to hold the ball and settle things down rather than just blast it away to set up for another Nigerian attack. So Sorber showing his maturity as a defensive midfielder there. And, and Bora Milutinovic picked Mike Sorber as his player of the tournament for the USA during the World Cup. And Sorber playing for the Unam Pumas in the Mexican First Division. Unam getting through to the quarterfinals. Sorber, a teammate of Jorge Campos, losing a tremendous quarterfinal series to be eliminated. Akocha on the ball. You saw that dribbling. Terrific balance by Akocha because he was even clipped by Caligiuri. Well, see you sent it in for Akocha. Free kick for the U.S. So far, it looks to be J.J. Okocha to be the most dangerous player on the ball for this Nigerian team. He's made some space for himself at midfield with quick dribbles and has begun to penetrate through the U.S. defense. Paul Caligiuri at central defense. Chilo Balboa playing sweeper today. Brian Bliss, number three, at left back. Had a tremendous year for his third division East German club. Siasia directing traffic in the midfield. Now Aroha pushing up for Nigeria. Rather flips it inside. Siasia has it back. Zaki, number 13, dispossessed. Wegerly from Wegerly setting up his teammates. Stewart in the box. Aroha gets the head to it. Stewart gets a foot in and is called for the dangerous play. That is exactly, though, what the U.S. has been missing this year in their friendlies, the understanding on offense. Regularly able to drop a little bit because Stewart will come forward and Clopas will be more of the target player. And that's more in tune with Wegerly's abilities to drop a little bit into midfield and spring attack rather than he ha having to perform as an out-and-out -out target player. And Wegerly's coming off a touch, really tough match against Costa Rica. He had four fairly good scoring opportunities and really had only one decent shot on goal out of all four of them several weeks ago in Tampa. The U.S. Getting through to the second round. That memorable crowd and the atmosphere around the loss to Brazil. The victory over Colombia. Getting through as a third place team. Now Nigeria on the attack. Bliss beaten to the inside. Abdullahi's ball and slips through all the way to Friedel who will put a foot to it. free kick for Nigeria. Foul at midfield. We look at John Harks and he's been a part of this. The USA have had a fantastic record in these U.S. Cups. The very first one they tied Italy. They beat Ireland. They beat Portugal. And on this very field in the 93 U.S. Cup they defeated England 2-0. Dangerous ball. Kocha with a goal! J.J. Okocha poaching. Just outside the box in the ninth minute, it is 1-0 Nigeria.
A coach here just stepping into this and launching it past Brad Friedel as we have another look. The ball goes first out to the right side and a coach just starts to creep up near the end of the box and it was an unfortunate deflection but there he is stepping through with the right foot, drives the ball towards the upper corner and no time to react for Brad Friedel and it's this little deflection here that put it directly into the path of J.G. Okocha with the right foot and screened also is Friedel by another Nigerian player out in front so he didn't even get a Ladies look at it until it was blazing past him. August J.J. Okocha with the goal. one nothing Nigeria. U.S. on the attack. Klopas, that ball deflected high. Okocha looking, as we said, to transfer and helping his prospects right there. Not very happy with life in the Bundesliga. Now Nigeria with a life and the lead on a field they know well from the World Cup. Nigeria always known as a very volatile type of squad. If things go well for them, they could just take it up even higher and raise their game. On the other hand, if misfortune strikes, they tend to go into the tank. So this is really a bad start in terms of the prospects for the USA today. Roja lays it back. Nigeria taking their time with the lead on a coach's goal. U.S. have been pushing the attack, but now the momentum definitely belonging to the Super Eagles. Calajuri comes through to win that ball. Now John Harks across the halfway line. Roy Weggerly with a little space. Harks pushing up. The goal! Oh, Rufai beaten to the near post and we're tied! These two teams have already traded goals. It comes up the left side. Weggerly is onto it. He looks up. He slows up. He knocks it back. And look at all of the space John Hartz has. And he unloads a shot. And the ball skips past Peter Rupai. The fact that the grass is wet. The ball is wet. Really fooled Rupai. But a good approach work in the space there taken by Hartz. And he hits a dipping shot that skips off of the grass underneath goalkeeper Peter Rupai. So a big goal because it stops that momentum that I mentioned that when Nigeria feels like things are going their way, they're almost unstoppable. John Hart's fifth goal for the national side in his long and very distinguished career for the U.S. And Hart scores, the sun comes out. We're just reporting the facts. So it's 1-1. Okocha in the ninth minute, Harks in the tenth minute. Just like that, as the U.S. Cup 95 opens with a flourish. Siasia, number 18, works in against Harks. Okocha sends it wide. Bliss defensively gets in there. Participating in bringing you today's game is Nike. 1-1 one, one our score. Nigeria still in possession. Samson Siasia. Benedict Roja, number two, works against Stewart. Gallagher comes through for that ball. Gets it away from Akocha, which is object number one. John Hart scored a big goal, but just about 15 seconds ago, he was back making a very important defensive play. So that's one of the best qualities of a John Hart. He can help you at either end of the field, and he's so consistent in his performances. Bliss charged with the foul. Trying to control John Zaki, number 13. This Nigerian roster was in flux right up until this morning. Who would be here? Who would not be here? Amokachi is not here. Yakini is not here. Amunike is not here. This is a dangerous team. Burns gets ahead and the push against Nigeria. And when we heard that so many of the great European-based players would not be here, we wondered what kind of a team we would see. But Steve Sampson is very concerned that Nigeria has a lot of hungry young players who have this stage to prove something today. Not much to prove for some of the guys that are not here. Yakini, a former... Rashidi Yakini, a former African Player of the Year. Amuniki was just named the 94 African Player of the Year. And of course, Finiti George and Canu just won the European Champions Cup with Ajax over AC Milan. And the last time they were sighted, they still had their party hats on. That's right, Amokachi got to lift the FA Cup as well with uh, Everton. So it's been that kind of a year for Nigeria in Europe. Very talented players. Oh, 
tie match. Okocha in the ninth minute. Parks in the tenth at Foxborough. Along with Ty Keel, I'm Bob Lee. The U.S. Cup 95 on ESPN. Also participating in bringing you today's commercial-free presentation is Avis. Steve Sampson, who has come out and said a lot of very bold things. He doesn't feel he's getting the direction from the Federation on philosophy, whether to develop or get results. He feels the U.S. needs to get through to the second round of Copa America down in Uruguay this summer to really call it a, a success. And he does not know at what point Carlos... Alberto Pereira will be hired as the U.S. national coach. Hank Steinbrecher just had two days of negotiations in Spain, returning last night. And he's handled it, Steve Sampson, I think, very well. He's handled it extremely well, but he has his work cut, up, cut out for him at the Copa America. Peter Rufai is out. Rufai stunned by that ball by Harks that, as you notice, I skipped on the wet grass. Thought he had it, thought it was coming up, and it never did. I really don't believe he expected a shot that soon and from that far out from Harks. So John Harks, I think, caught him by surprise. Come on, Percy! There's Harks, the goal scorer. Weggerly into the box. Klopas chasing, working against Okara. And Okara, number six. But any time, Bob, that there is a wet surface, it pays to shoot from long range and low shots because the skip can fool the goalkeepers. It's turned into a pleasant afternoon. Rain has gone bye-bye. Okay. Seamus Mallon is field side. What a start to this match, Seamus. Tremendous start uh, and rather amazing to see this totally unflappable reaction of the Nigerian bench when the USA tied it up. Uh, was really surprised to me. No reaction whatsoever. They're very confident. Zaki, thank you, Seamus. Lays it back. Nigeria continuing on the attack. Burns keeps it away from Siasia. Iroha. Babalati, number 14, with a shot that's wide. Baba, I'm just as impressed with the unflappability of the U.S. team going down to an early goal there by J.J. Okocha and Harks able to grab the momentum back away from the Nigerians. So the U.S.A. is showing us a little bit here, too. The sweeper, Balboa. Stewart for Weggerly. And now Burns playing it safely back to Friedel. 28 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Weggerly with a head. Laid back to Stewart. Stewart with a shot skittering wide out of deflection and a corner kick now for the United States. I have to echo what you said, Ty. Down early, 1-0 on that center by a coach. The U.S. has come right back. This is the kind of soccer Steve Sampson has been expecting now for two matches, and we may see it. Well, even what we just saw there, the linking up between Weggerly as well as Frankie Klopas. They're looking for each other and combining and setting up shots from the perimeter. Harks on the corner kick. Dooley tries to flick on for Balboa. Went right through the goal mouth. Nice idea. Peter Rufai, his 46th appearance today for the national side, plays professionally in Portugal. Here's that chance, and the call goes against Weggerly for obstructing a defender and perhaps a little bit Rufai, the goalkeeper, as that ball came through. One one our score, if you've just joined us. U.S. with two shots, one of them beating Rufai of Kocha, the only shot, and the goal for Nigeria. When you look at both goals, I think in both instances it was a question of defenses perhaps sagging too far back and leaving a bit of space just out towards the edge of the area. And first, J.J. Okocha took advantage of that against the USA after a deflection, and then Hart was able to do it against the Nigerians on the tying goal. Ernie Stewart with the foul and a, a quick shake of hands. I don't know how friendly that was with the coach. They both play in Europe. Ernie in the Netherlands, J.J. in Germany. 
in a 10-goal performance this season. Ernie Stewart, in four seasons in the Dutch First Division, has scored 42 goals. And that's a good level to be consistently scoring at. On the right side, Abdullahi. Balboa gets a foot to it and puts it out. Seamus, what about Ernie Stewart playing on the right side in the midfield in this match? I'm getting a lot of instructions from the sideline uh, from Coach Sampson, who very much wants him to be the open man on the fast break. But uh, also to do some defensive work. Zaki tries to turn the ball. Put in! Well, some loose play out in front of Brad Friedel of the USA. They had some defenders back. They had enough bodies there. But Mike Burns really hesitated, and it was capitalized on by Nigeria. But it's a good give-and-go play. No offside. A nice fake here. Now the ball drawn back near the 12-yard spot on a quick. Burns has a foot on it. Could perhaps have cleared it. Instead, he presented it out in front to Wasiu who had an easy shot then to slot it away low. But this is a really nice pullback here, and a quick turn as well to keep the ball in front of Friedel and a poke away from Mike Burns, as Mike Burns appeared to have the ball under control and able to get it out of danger. Wasiu with the tally, and so it is 2-1 Nigeria in the 19th minute. Oh. Offense, yes, and then some today. And Nigeria continuing on the attack. Look on there, and Riedel pulls it down as a coach who tried to do something with it at the edge of the area. Wasio very opportunistic, though, because Mike Burns just a half second of hesitation. Because what really needs to happen there, that ball has to go immediately out. Both Nigerian goals. Quick chances, and they capitalize immediately. So the Super Eagles living up to their reputation and showing us what they showed us last summer. Showing pred predatory instincts. Yes. Well, the U.S. came back from the first goal. In a minute, we will see if they are able to equalize again. We were talking earlier about Ernie Stewart and his offensive abilities and what he's been able to do in the Netherlands. At halftime, we will take a look at the European and Mexican campaigns for many of the key players from last year's World Cup side. That's coming up at halftime here from Foxborough. Aroha trying to lead Wasio, the goal scorer. Balboa put the ball out for a corner kick. I don't know that he needed to there, although a throw in on a narrow field like this might be even more dangerous. Maybe that's what he was thinking. Okocha will take it on a very narrow 62-yard wide field. Put out by Sorber. He and Balboa were together at the far post. Better than having a green shirt there. I think they've learned that already. <laughs> it's, it's good to have the two white shirts, but to some degree, the plan of playing with five defenders appears to be either backfiring or not effective enough, giving up two goals already to USA Defense, not even one quarter of the way into this game. Wasiu's corner kick. And Sorber will let it go out for the goal kick. 2-1, Nigeria on top, Wasiu and Akocha, and John Harts for the U.S. Ernie Stewart, set free against Aroha down the wing, he's got a runner on the box. And it deflects out for the corner kick. But I like what I'm seeing in terms of the chemistry for the U.S. attack. Frankie Klopas dishing off a very nice ball into space, which is the way Ernie Stewart likes it, and that's the way his talents need to be used because if you put it behind a defender, Ernie Stewart can race behind him. Klopas will take the corner kick. Rufai is out and over the top by Balboa. Balboa nearly had one there because he won the battle for the ball and there was some open net to shoot for. And Balboa, a very high scoring defender. Ten goals as an international for the USA. If only he had number 11, the bicycle kick. Oh, yeah. Well, he'd be a multimillionaire for endorsements. But look at that. He gets up so well. In fact, beats Rufai, who had an outstretched hand up there. But the jumping power of Balboa won that battle, as I mentioned. But he couldn't then lodge it into the unoccupied net since Rufai was out. 
Well, this Nigerian team, their lineup in flux, their coaching situation very muddled, has the 2-1 lead with 21 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Kaiwo, Wasiu, the goal scorer who put Nigeria up on top. Swaggerly taken down by Chidi and Wanu, number four. Mike Burns will take the restart. Six U.S. players at the 18-yard line as Burns assesses what to do now. A seventh push is up. Trying to get it to Balboa. And Nigeria will throw it in, leading this match 2-1. U.S. Cup 95 on ESPN. Complete coverage here and on ABC. Halftime also, we'll take a look at the U.S. women's national team. They are through to the quarterfinals in the Women's World Cup in Sweden. And in remarkable fashion yesterday, winning their group in the last minute as Brad Friedel is there as Balboa shepherded that ball back to him. Stewart now in the box. Ernie Stewart waiting for some help. Far post, Weggerly put aside by Rufai. Beautifully done by Ernie Stewart, a well-measured cross as he waited to get Weggerly into position. Look at Stewart, he looks up once, he's going to look up again, now he's going to lift it all the way over to the back post to put Rufai out of position, and Weggerly just barely heads wide in, he can't believe it, because he knows that this cross by Stewart has taken Rufai partially out of the play. Great work by Ernie Stewart, and Weggerly had a golden opportunity. And Rufai able to watch it go out, never did touch it, so the Nigerian goal kick is Thomas Dooley now has the ball, number five. As we joined us late, the U.S. going with a sweeper and a four-back formation with Weggerly and Klopaz as the forwards and Ernie Stewart in midfield today along with Sorber and Harks. Dooley watching defensively, three white shirts surrounding the Super Eagle. You know who's here today? There he is, Alexi Lawless, who landed at Logan Airport about two hours ago. Got a police escort down. Padova, that ball deflects as Friedel puts it away. But there was a whistle before that deflection. Lawless, yesterday, his team winning on penalty kicks to avoid relegation, flew to London from Florence in the neutral side game spent the night look at that the u.s team came down the road from needham he came all the way from italy <laughs> to sit on the bench and maybe see action later almost four thousand miles and he played 120 minutes in that game stewart had to make that tackle and he did and now a lead for weggerly but it skitters out sheamus in addition to trying to get uh, ernie stewart to be the lead man on the breakout as you've seen him do a number of times Coach Sampson is also trying to get Tom Dooley to come forward a lot more out of the back as the extra attacker through midfield. And he did on that le attack before last and almost got a goal out of it. So look for Dooley or perhaps even Caligiuri to try to burst through the middle uh, in the rest of this first half. Well, the U.S. looking to try and do that. At the same time, maintain on, numbers in the back against what could be a devastating Nigeria offense. As we've seen, their two shots have resulted in two goals. Well, this setup for the U.S. with Balboa all the way in behind does allow maybe even a little more freedom also for John Harks to come forward as he did to get the U.S. goal. Paludu with a chip. Burns with a head. Settled there by Weggerly and Ernie Stewart tries to spring that counterattack. 17 minutes remaining in the first half. Nigeria 2. The U.S.A. 1. Mike Sorber. John Harks. Harks will push up, and Sorber waits for some help. There's Caligiuri moving up. Sorber always seems to be able to present himself with options. When it looks like he's about to be closed down, he has another, another way out. So his tremendous field awareness pays off. And a goal kick for Peter Rufai. 
United States looking for a quality victory, looking ahead to Copa, Copa America, in a very tough group later this summer against three teams, none of whom they've ever beaten, Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. U.S. Cup 95, a big test as well. Wegerly, Hart, Klopas, look at that. And then Wanu takes it down to the six. Calajuri now. U.S. looking to equalize. They did so once already. Abdullahi, number three. Saki, number 15. The U.S. goal by John Hart. It came in the 10th minute, and it really surprised the keeper, Peter Rufai. Here's Roy Wagerly coming down the left side. He just tucks the ball back to John Hart, who has some space then to step into and just crunches the ball down low. It's a skipping, dipping ball past Peter Rufai. An important goal at the time. It stopped some big-time momentum. Lopas running on, and Rufai had to put it out, and so the U.S. with a very deep throw, and Wegerly will take it nearly immediately back to Klopas. Stewart. Stewart Mabai. Now Wegerly. Lopas couldn't get there. Nigeria looks to clear, and they do. And tackled away by Thomas Dooley. Beautiful sliding tackle by Dooley. Those long legs come in handy, and he times it so well. He was victimized in that winning goal by Costa Rica in the 90th minute. As the U.S. had pushed up in numbers looking for the winning goal. Okocha, number 10. Faludu, number 15. Aroha, and Wegerly takes him right off the ball. And Wanu comes through, or rather Aroha, to try to win it back. I'm encouraged by some of what I'm seeing in terms of the U.S. attack because Ernie Stewart, Klopas, Wegerly, and even Hartz when he comes forward, they really seem to have some ideas in terms of how they're going to link up. And the fact is they also have some bodies up there. Too many times we've seen a U.S. team with only one or two players up in there trying to get into the attack. Nigeria on the attack. The coach, yeah? That ball can seem glued to his foot when he dribbles. The super dribbler of this team. Back on the ball. Caligiuri couldn't get it. Back to Akocha. Flicks it for himself and Bliss takes it away. Akocha found a little seam there in the U.S. defense. Those need to be tightened up. Remember against Costa Rica, they weren't tightened up. And on the counterattack, those gaps in the U.S. defensive setup were exploited beautifully by Costa Rica. Hart sends Klopas down the side and Alpara puts it out. 32nd minute at Foxborough. Frankie yep. Klopas, who with his team in the Greek first and his Napolo. And Wano puts it out, it will be a corner kick. Apollon got a UEFA berth. He got a UEFA berth, but he's been used as a wide attacking defender and he says he's not that pleased about it he has to do too much marking he's he's the guy that <laughs> likes to get the glory out in front of the goal and he's getting a chance to do some of that today playing in a striker's role for the usa today well the u.s has had the better of the corners and they'll take another arcs will take it regularly inside the goal area Dooley, balboa stewart klopas all in the area as well and at the six yard line of para headed it out now nigeria waiting for some help and played away by burns with zaki coming down the left side very good turnout today in foxborough i don't know what the official attendance will prove to be Taiwu, who has one goal, the cross, and a whistle, and over well, the end line as well he pulled it back and could not pull it back in time. It went out of play, but we saw a moment ago a situation where Nigeria had a three-on-three -three going with a lot of space, and you're going to see more and more of that because the United States starting to get into the attack, pushing a few more players forward. They're not going to have the numbers back all the time that they were hoping to have against this Nigerian squad because now they need a goal. Look at that ball by Zaki. 
and a whistle and a push against Nigeria but Zaki with a beautiful ball to spring that attack now Sorber again the quick restart that the US intent against Nigeria quickly with three kicks into play weggerly has got Stewart to the right tries to lead him in the box oh and it skitters through the roof by who takes no chances again a good idea by Weggerly as he tried to thread that ball through onto the streaking Ernie Stewart and Ernie Stewart has covered so much ground already in this game he's made some defensive runs that were 60 70 yards long and then immediately gets back into the attack Sorber now he's got Harks in front of him and uses him on the left side with Klopas in the middle Weggerly making a run inside Stewart puts it wide this is good stuff though as Sorber kept possession, got it out to Harks. Harks looks up, and there were two U.S. players sprinting in at the back post. Stewart, one of them. There it is, the ball from Harks. <laughs> Didn't happen that fast. But uh, these are good attacking ideas by the United States. They continue to create opportunities like this, and they will make a tie game out of this. Brian Bliss. But it's out for the Nigerians as we have approximately 10 minutes now remaining in a 2-1 first half halftime we will see what the U.S. stars of World Cup 94 have done with their careers check on the women and their progress in Sweden with a lift cleaned out of the box but not out as John Harks is there with Klopas turns it nicely with a shot Rufai is there and he made no doubt about that save having been beaten once on a skipping ball from Hartz from 30 yards. Yep, Hartz tried to win it. Tough, tough hustle there by Hartz. This was Hartz earlier backing the ball inside to Klopas. And Klopas missed strikes this ball. He wanted to get it up off the turf a little bit and more power into it. Rufa had no problem with it. As you mentioned, maybe it is 2-1, but the U.S. getting that offensive understanding and really reflecting Steve Sampson's and that ball was out as Stewart tried to play it before it crossed the touchline. U.S. really reflecting, I think, today better than they have in any match so far what Steve Sampson wants to accomplish offensively. There's been some creativity. There have been numbers up, and there's been the chemistry that I mentioned earlier. So uh, what happens in this type of situation, though, if they don't make one of these, they've been creating many opportunities. If, if they don't make one of them count, eventually Nigeria is going to steal one the other way. They've already stolen two on quick opportunities. Not stolen, they've earned them, but Nigerian player is down. It's only the second meeting between USA and Nigeria. They first met. Take a look at this tussle. Balboa stepping through and putting the, uh, that's what's called in hockey, uh, a hip check or a shoulder charge <laughs> that, where the NHL defensemen stand up the opposing forwards at the blue line. No blue line out there, but uh, I think Balboa is trying to draw one. It's without a Sheamus. Well, over here, I'll have a little time out for this injury. Coach Steve Sampson, i got to tell you, the most common word out of his mouth this entire first half has been forward, forward, forward. That's the whole emphasis coming from the bench is to get players forward and to support the runners up top. And I think the fact that the field is a little bit narrow uh, makes that a little easier because there's less room in many ways for them to worry about counterattacks against them. And it's been very attractive and attacking soccer both ways with seven and a half minutes now remaining in the first half and Nigeria with two goals the US with one well they've had the numbers forward Stewart's up there Wagerly's up there Hearts has come up uh, look at those touches in the midfield US very calmly winning the ball and settling things down Stewart takes a push from behind and Iroha is called for that we haven't had any cards yet we've had three goals these two have been having a battle though on this near side Ernie Stewart with his great speed and, and Iroha is put together very solidly and he's been trying to manhandle Stewart. U.S. hoping to equalize before halftime. I was mentioning before it's the second time these teams have met as national sides. Nigeria winning the prior meeting back in 1988 by a 3-2 score. Another throw in for the U.S. On that day, Balboa, Bliss, and Klopas played in the match. That was played in 
South Korea. Remember, the U.S. scored on a throw-in against Costa Rica, just like this one. Burns with a long throw-in, headed down, and Rufai is there. So Mike Burns getting the long throw into the traffic out in front of Nigerian goalkeeper Peter Rufai. There's Mike Burns. He launches it. It's on the line drive. Balboa, Dooley, they're all in there. And the ball is snapped down, but not powerfully enough, and Rufai covered it. Weggerly now wins it. Sorber has it. There's Dooley. Harks pushes up the left side. U.S. going forward, as Steve Sampson has been yelling in this first half. Lifts just couldn't keep it in play. Well, John Harks trying to use the, the full width, what little width there is out there of this field, to spring Ryan Bliss from his defensive position forward into the attack. So that's what Steve Sampson's talking about, getting players like a Brian Bliss forward from their defensive positions to support or even break through on the attack. Now Bliss with that ball for Frank Klopas. Weggerly waiting for some help on the right side. Sorber chips it ahead, knocked down by Alparu. Guess who was trying to run all the way through? Uh, one of our center backs, Tom Dooley. Wow, wow, wow. Break for Nigeria now. Zaki stays with the feet of Pringle with a kick save. You don't see that so often. I think he was completely fooled. That was a hockey move. If we get a look at that shot from Friedel's angle. A coach just threw ball, and Friedel comes out. You're going to see that ball must have swerved on him. We have a look at it. This is Friedel's angle. Watch it come through. There's a split in the U.S. defense. And the left-footed. Look at it. Look at that ball dance wow. and dip. It was a knuckleball, and Friedel barely reacted. There's no chance for him to get his hands to it. All he could do was make a stab at it with his leg, and, and I don't know, it may have even slightly touched Balboa out in front. Now Brad Friedel with the hands, and that time the feet. That's just sheer reflexes there, because that ball changed direction decidedly on its approach to Friedel. Friedel starting this match. The next match for the U.S. in U.S. Cup 95 will be against Mexico, and Casey Keller, who is the backup keeper today, is expected to get the start that day. Now the U.S. moves up. Dooley tries to work it up against the Faro, but no support in the box. Last five minutes, and one there, but a foul against Klopas on the push just outside the box. Nigeria, 11 fouls the U.S., 12. Nigeria, on average, was the most physical team last year in World Cup 94. They averaged well over 24 fouls a match. And that really hurt them in their loss against Argentina. It upset their rhythm. Taiwo, who has a goal, not able to turn that ball. But what a loaded ball was hit just a moment ago when Friedel was forced to make that kick save. That ball was dancing and dipping. Zaki shot. And Friedel able to put it aside with his feet. Great atmosphere today here in Foxborough. Nigerians did not bring anywhere near the number of fans with them that they did for the World Cup on a good turnout of U.S. fans. Oh, during the World Cup, the drums, you could hear two hours before the game. They rivaled the Brazilians in setting yep. the backbeat for the World Cup. Offside flag is up across the way. We said the United States has the U.S. Cup. Then Copa America, several friendlies later this year. You had a look at Balboa, the sweeper back today. And the CONCACAF Gold Cup in Los Angeles early next January. And then you start to think about qualifying for France. As Burns is taken down. Let's see if we'll have a card. And we will. Hart's looking very dangerous. Very confident there on the ball as he approaches the penalty area and shooting range. Remember, he scored from here in the earlier going. And he tried to cut inside the Nigerian defender. He is clipped directly from behind. And this is a free kick situation. The U.S. will try and capitalize on the yellow card. 
given. Abdullah, he is given the card in the 44th minute. I think I said, Burns, you are obviously right, but pictures prove it. It was Parks taken down. And so, about 25 yards away now. In a 2-1 Nigeria lead, Harks near the ball, Wegerly number 10, Klopas. U.S. asking for the 10 yards. And our referee, John Jerome of Canada, sets it. Harks, Klopas, Harks into the wall, loose in front. That's a six. Dooley taken down. And Dooley appeared to have a look at that ball, at least at the outset, after it had deflected through the wall. Hark's now with a throw, and again on this narrow field, it's an exceptional weapon. Rufi is there at the edge of the goal now. There's a chance that this ball is deflected off a couple players, but look, it drops right in front of Dooley, and he slips, and he was slightly bumped as he tried to follow up on the shot. Now Bliss, not able to save that ball. We'll have a little bit of injury time added on because of the one injury in this first half, but not too much. All the goal scoring in the first 19 minutes. And since then, it's settled down, but still the U.S. showing that they are here to push up and here to attack. Carlos Alberto on the left, Shaibu Amadou on the right. That's an interesting situation on the Nigeria bench. Carlos is advising. So who, could, your contract. who could forget Carlos Alberto's years with the New York Cosmos? Just a glorious central defender. Always had time on the ball, but even more unforgettable his goal in the 1970 World Cup final that was set up by Pelé, the fourth goal for Brazil that day that really finished off Italy in that World Cup final of 1970. So, a legend sitting on the Nigerian bench is Carlos Alberto. If you were going to pick your all-time 11, he would be on it. And he's here today advising Nigeria. Well, think about it. He was the captain of the 1970 Brazil team. Pelé was not. <laughs> think about it. He flipped at the cup. Burns now for Balfour. Work by the United States and his 100th appearance, Cello equalizes the match. And what a day for Marcelo Balboa. He makes one of the great milestones of international soccer with 100 caps and comes up with this all-important goal during U.S. Cup 95. Off the cross here for Mike Burns. It's an outswinger. Balboa is unattended and he drives the ball low and powerfully past Peter Rufi. And you can't be happier for a guy who's worked so hard to be a part of this U.S. team. And he takes it wonderfully and drives the ball in and a perfectly placed cross here by Mike Burns finds Marcelo Balboa unattended at the back post and it's a two to two tie just seconds before halftime. Incredibly important psychological goal twice the United States has come back to equalize it is halftime. Let's go down to Seamus Mallon. Seamus? Hi, I'm here with Steve Sampson, and Steve, thank you for joining us on uh... X-Start. Today's live and uninterrupted ESPN special event is proudly presented to you in part by Buttle. Well, come on to start the second half. Syria are uh, the best football in the world, arguably, and that man has traveled from Florence to London overnight in London and got here just before the kickoff to dress for the U.S. Kobe Jones coming on as well. But what a lot, what Lexi Lawless went through to get to the last year, the first division, for the first time in 32 years, and they are staying there, and Lawless, the major reason why defensively. His head must be spinning, but he must be elated, though, that his team will stay in this Serie A, the first division in Italy. This segment of the game is presented commercial-free by MasterCard as we kick off the second half of a 2-2 match. U.S. Cup 95. Mexico and Colombia, the other two squads playing in U.S. Cup 95. All four teams playing in the World Cup last year, and they're back for more this year. Klopas, number 14. You said Kobe Jones, 
It's come on as well. He's on the ball. Kobe for Stewart. Dooley goes down. Hart tries to turn it, and it's wide. And it's deflected for a corner kick. Wallace and Jones around. Bliss and Wegerly. Some excellent, excellent work there just a minute ago by Klopas to create a goal-scoring chance. But with Lalas into the lineup, reunited are Marcelo Balboa and Alexi Lalas, the twin central defenders that were so essential to the U.S. team's success in World Cup 94. Klopas will take the corner. He's got Peter Rufai's view of things. There's Lalas poaching in front. Balboa hit her wide. Boy, 100 caps, he's thinking 2-3 goals. <laughs> that goal before was his 11th of the national side. It came to tie the match in the last minute of the first half. Cello's flying, flying, no question. Here's this ball, it's an in-swinger. Balboa at the back post, winning this air duel again. And Nigeria really having a tough time closing down the USA on those set pieces. Zaki. Against Wallace, who wins that ball with the subtlest that touches and keeps it alive, sent to the far post, though. And Burns is able to disrupt. Burns defended well, but Lawless defended even better as he extracted the ball from the Nigerian attacker in the corner. Lawless had a goal yesterday, but it was disallowed. But he had three goals for Padova this year. He should get some type, type of jet lag award. Is even showing up today. Sends a message to his teammates, too, I think, about commitment. Absolutely. Frankie Klopas, back up front. He did not play that position this year for Apollon in the Greek first division. So Dooley streams forward. Lawless streams forward. Marcelo Balboa comes up as well. All threats in the air. Burns with the ball. And Wanu gets ahead to it. And another deep throw in for the U.S. on a 62-yard wide field. Jones winds it up. Wallace, and he's called for jumping in. Mixing it up right away in terms of the physical play. He left Heathrow at 9.55 this morning, London time. Arrived at Logan shortly afternoon. Missed his originally scheduled flight from Florence because the match did go to penalty kicks. And late last night, it was up in the air whether he would be here today because he missed that flight, but was able to get to London and overnight there. Approach just sends it wide. Burns watches defensively again. But Theo, what Theo in? Tackled out by Burns. Guasillo showing some acceleration down that left side. Burns trying to stay with him. Not quite able to. J.J. Okocha, who has one Nigeria goal on the throw-in. Dooley with a head. Sent right back in, but off target. Later this afternoon, Formula One action from Montreal. The Grand Prix of Canada. We'll see Michael Schumacher fresh from his victory on the narrow and twisting course in Monaco. On the more forgiving course in Montreal, that's this afternoon at 5 Eastern time. Stewart challenging, but Nigeria wins that. Siasia is taken down in a foul against the U.S. Tom Dooley also covering a great deal of ground. He was listed as a central defender, but he has pushed more and more forward as this game has gone along. Shot whistling wide on the left side. Four goals in the first half. That attempt by Wasiu, who had the second Nigerian goal in the 19th minute. Twice the United States has equalized with two substitutions if you've just joined us in the second half with Kobe Jones coming on along with Alexi Lalas. Brian Bliss sat down. Roy Wegerly took a seat. The United States looking very composed and understanding of each other offensively in the first half and now Kobe Jones comes inside against Iroha. Mike Sorber who is the glue of the Pumas defense in the Mexican First Division. Hart tries to flick it ahead. Hamdullahi on the ball. Hart gets a foot in. 
Okara starts the counterattack for Nigeria. Both Stormer and Balboa having very successful performances with their teams in the Mexican First Division. In fact, at one, one point, Stormer's team had about a 14-game unbeaten streak going with, with Mike Stormer in the lineup. And then Balboa's team, when he joined the Central Defense, their goals given up statistic dropped by 50%. Siasia, Samson Siasia, J.J. of coaches sends it wide. Iroha from left back to the left foot to the 18, flicked on, but Friedel's got it. Friedel making that leg save of the first half on Zaki's shot. 10 for the U.S. Nigeria, five shots. Short ahead of the field. And again, the immediate restart for the U.S. Bernsey. Jones. Sorber lays it back for Jones with a lift inside at the six. Put out by Abdullahi. Nice touches, though, by the U.S. Very good idea by John Hart. Instead of trying to score that ball with his head, he tried to put it back across the face of the goal into an even more dangerous spot. Lawless pushes up, leads Stewart. Nice tackle by Anwanu, who is a very classy central defender. Zaki to the inside now, Nigeria on the attack with Kocha. Well, see you, picked up by Burns. Kocha, Jones watching. Abdullahi, bring it inside. Now Kocha. Sorber tackles and Jones has it. Well, Steve Sampson said Nigeria not getting behind the U.S., trying to pass through them, and the U.S. holding their ground on that last exchange. Ernie Stewart now has moved up into the central striker role alongside Frankie Klopas because Toby Jones is playing the wide position that Stewart played in the first half. So we'll get a different look at Ernie Stewart in terms of where he's starting his attack. Siasia away from Sorber. Akocha sends it wide. Iroha on the overlap now against Burns. Jones is there to help out. A little push there by Iroha, no whistle. And finally Jones gets a foot in. Siasia keeps it alive. Akocha. Now this is the danger here. The U.S. bags too far back. The shot from outside could beat them as it did in the first half. Galagiri with the ball for Frank Klopas, who is taken down. And we may have a card. Babalati will get the caution in the 54th minute as Klopas was taken down and hard. Klopas takes a hard hit in the back of his right ankle here. That can make that the left ankle because the second leg came through. Look at the scissors action from Abdullahi and Klopas still trying to shake it off as he was crunched on the scissors tackle from behind. He didn't play a minute in the World Cup, but leading up to the World Cup, he was arguably the best offensive United States player in terms of goal scored. Babalati with the caution in the 54th minute, the second part of the match, both to Nigeria, free kick U.S. Caligiuri will look to take it. Stewart there, Babalati on him. Lawless couldn't get there, and Wanu got the head. Offside. Lawless had his arm out as well. He may have been called for the foul. There are a couple of substitutes getting ready to enter the field for Nigeria. Each team is allowed three substitutions in this match. Wagerly and Bliss have already gone off for the USA. They went off at halftime. I thought Wagerly had an improved performance over what he did against Costa Rica. So I don't believe he was taken off because he was not performing. John Zaki comes off. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. 
Eneguia, number 17, goes on. Entering the game is number 15. And also going on, Ndukwe, number 12. Leading the game is number 15, Edemont Faludu. And Faludu comes off as well, number 15. So two substitutions made for Nigeria. Steen has made now two substitutions early in the second half. Free kick now. About 40 yards out. J.J. Okocha over the ball. Right to Kobe Jones. <laughs> Kobe Jones must have been spying on their training session yesterday. He read the script. Okara with the ball. It's been said that concentration is where Nigeria falls short. And Okocha just lazily putting a free kick into play. Participating in bringing you today's game is Umbro. Free kick for Nigeria. In the 57th minute. Good one on Carl. Plays for the Alst side in Belgium. Finished fourth place this year in the Belgian First Division. He was a captain for the Under-17 World Championship team for Nigeria. And Nigeria has had a great deal of success at Youth World Cups, both at the Under-20 and the Under-17 levels, having won Youth World Championships at both of those levels. So young players keep coming up out of the Nigerian ranks, and many of them go on to Europe and sign rather large contracts. Dia, Dia. Cello gets his set in for the throw, and Sheamus. A substitution number 12, and Duque has come in. It's going to be marking right up on Lexi Lalas. Um, because he is a big, tall, powerful player, and the Nigerian bench feels that Lawless has really been too dangerous on those corner kicks as an offensive weapon, and they also want a target up front that they can play the long ball to if they want to, and they feel Ndukwe can out-jump Lawless, especially as he's uh, come from a fairly long journey to get here. So that's an interesting matchup to watch in this second half. Well, Ndukwe is the leading scorer in the Nigerian domestic league. Loose at eight yards away, and... Finally, Kalajuri got a right foot to it. And a break for the U.S. Flow pass. Ernie Stewart. Waiting for help to the inside. Ernie Stewart leaves it back. Okocha on the counter. He mishit that one. And it'll be a goal kick. Also participating in today's commercial free presentation is Major League Soccer. 59th minute, Massachusetts, Foxborough, the site where Nigeria played a number of World Cup matches last year. Were eliminated by Italia on the late goal by Roberto Baggio. But advising the coach, they're seated next to each other. Carlos did not participate in running the practice yesterday. He watched and uh, I think was a little surprised at some of the drills that Amadou was running for the Nigerian side. Now he's a little more sure of himself defensively. You don't see those openings that Nigeria was able to take advantage of in the first half. Two openings, two goals for Nigeria. The U.S. able to equalize each time. Balboa most successfully on the header from the service from Burns in the 45th minute. Lawless gets the head down. That's right. Alexi made it here from Italy on the overnight. Lawless said it took him about uh, 20, 20 cups of coffee to get himself going. Little caffeine, little airline food, and he was ready to go. Not so much offense on goal in the second half so far as Hart looks to win that. John Hart, who just three weeks ago had surgery on his leg to correct a problem with one of the veins, only began training five days ago after a not so great year with Darby County with injury problems. He's negotiating with MLS. He may sign a contract. It's been said that Carlos Valderrama may shortly sign an MLS contract. 
for the fact that John Harts is here playing today so well, in fact taking a leadership role on so far in this game, also shows us something about commitment. I mean, he had a surgery just several days ago for a circulatory problem, so uh, you know, he doesn't really need to be out there, but he's, he's already provided a goal for this U.S. team in today's game. Sent wide by Aneguia. Iroha pushes up. Pushed there by Lawless in that exchange with Ndukwe, that man-to-man, nose-to-nose battle that Seamus mentioned, Ndukwe and Lawless. That battle is long on Braun as they will continue to tussle physically. That's 35 yards out. Friedel's got it. Went to his knees. Brad Friedel plays in Denmark. Tried to play with Newcastle. Couldn't get a work from it last year. And Friedel handles this very well because, look, it's a very low shot. It's skipping along that wet grass. And he covers it with his entire body in behind the ball. 63rd minute. Diatia watched by Caligiuri. J.J. Okocha squares it off to Aroha. He settles it for Okpara. His ball. Nduque. Nduque to the 18. Wallace got one touch in there. Caligiuri watching and finally Burns breaks it up. It's called swarm defense. But they are plugging the holes out in front of the U.S. goal. Nduque, obviously a very dangerous player. That is on side. Start save by Rufai who came off his line. But Stewart also had some contact with Rufai. There was a bit of a collision right as Stewart took that shot. But that, that chance by Stewart reminds me a little bit of his winning goal against Columbia during the World Cup. What a goal that was as he won a race to a ball in behind the defense, but then took a strong hit from Rufai. He is favoring the groin area, whether that is a pull or a bruise. Burns. Headed out by Nduque. Akota with time and space here. Hart came back, tried to win that ball. Akota squares it off. Wasiu lays it back. Loose at the 18. Hart is there. Siasia tries to win it. No whistle. Lays it back with a shot. It's wide. J.J. Okocha is starting to spray some balls around for midfield, but here's the ball. It's placed through in behind the Nigerian defense, and Ernie Stewart races to it. He's got tremendous speed. He beats Rufai to the ball. There was no big contact. or just a nice save by Rufai, so maybe in stretching for that ball, Ernie Stewart felt something in his leg. We mentioned that he seemed to have a problem perhaps with the groin. Seamus? Actually, Ernie Stewart hurt himself before that. I've been watching for the last five minutes, ten minutes, really. He's been struggling with a groin injury of some kind. And uh, I don't know if he's been signaling to come off or not, but he has not been comfortable. And as you saw, there was no contact on that great opportunity. So that, that gamble of moving Ernie up front uh, could cause some problems now if they have to take him out. Stewart at the 18, lays it back for Slopas and the whistle offside. Behind the U.S. goal, warming up are Claudio Reyna and Jovan Karofsky. Either one of them could come on for Stewart and still offer some offensive talent, in particular Karofsky, who does play at times as a striker. This is the only U.S. Cup match that Stewart will be playing. He's going to get a little bit of a vacation before Copa America as he's just coming off the Dutch season with Willem II. So, Ernie making an impact today and he may be substituted. Siasia, look at that ball control. Iroha. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Dooley is there. A yellow caution card has been issued by the referee to the USA number eight, Ernie Stewart. Stewart getting a card. In the 65th minute, we didn't catch that. That happened behind the play, so Ernie Stewart picks up a caution. That's the first U.S. card of the match and the third caution of the match. Caligiuri trying to 
screen blow pass and an offside pass. Stewart fighting that injury. The USA already missing a few players through injury. Tab Ramos not here with a knee problem with a medial collateral ligament. He may appear later in this U.S. Cup, but not in today's game. Samson trying to make a decision on Ernie Stewart whether to keep him on or bring him off. Uh, Jeff Agus missing today also with a groin injury. He may miss the entire U.S. Cup. Lopez has just picked up a card as well in the 66 minutes. So two cards in two minutes for the U.S. and obviously with a Canadian referee. I don't know what you're saying. It'll be interesting to see here how Steve Sampson handles his team. Remember in the first half, Seamus Mallon noticed that he was always saying, forward, get forward, get forward. Now he has a tie against a, a very well thought of team worldwide, Nigeria. He has a 2-2 tie. Two, two, two. Does he play for the tie, or does he continue in that offensive mentality to send players forward? But risk losing the game on the counterattack has happened against Costa Rica. So a big decision here, and it should tell us something about what Samson is thinking long term. Well, knowing that his long-term guarantee extends only to the end of July, I gotta think they're gonna go for the win. He'd like to bag a big win, for sure. Ernie Stewart, Julie Posada! Toby Jones! USA as they take their first lead of this game and Sarver just pops it out to the right side to Burns and Burns lifts it into the corner towards Ernie Stewart. He gets away from his defender. He's able to look up, pull the ball back. Dooley gets out of the way and Kobe Jones steps through and drives it low into the corner of the net. But what a great turn of speed here by Stewart. And look at him. He looks up to see where Jones is, draws the ball back. Jones slots it then perfectly placed into the corner of the net. When's the last time, Ty? I'm going to ask you to put your historical cap on. You have seen a U.S. team play so well offensively in a match. I can think back to the 84 Olympics. They played a very good match. Foul there on the midfield. It has been a long time since we've seen this kind of for me just an offense. I think it goes back to, to the first U.S. Cup in 92. We saw some of this creativity and chemistry going on between attacking players. And there's no better illustration of it than just then when Kobe Jones was able to communicate and make eye contact with Ernie Stewart to create that goal. Jones in the 67th minute from Stewart. We had just finished wondering how the U.S. would play it. Now they're playing for the win. They have the lead. They'll ball with that tackle. Now they have to play to keep that lead. Sorofsky getting ready to come on. A U.S. substitution. Thorber defensively takes it away from Siasia. Lawless. Jet lag, caffeine out, out there on the pitch. Played yesterday in Italy, playing today in Massachusetts. I noticed on the go-ahead goal by Kobe Jones, normally Alexi Lawless would be right in there in the celebration, diving on top of everybody. He was back at his own end of the field. <laughs> He's gassed. He's trying to get some oxygen, so that's one of the few times you'll ever see Lawless not be right in there with his buddies celebrating. Go on. Blackie Klopas has got Stewart, couldn't get it to him. Now Stewart may have pulled a muscle, but he's visibly limping though after the play. He's able to make the run. Salboa takes a push there from Ndukwu, and we'll see it'll have certainly a foul, no card issued. And Salboa went down hard. Toby Jones, your, your go-ahead goal scorer. We're going to have a look at it. And it was a well-orchestrated play all the way around it. And look at Ernie Stewart turn the corner, turn on the Jets, and then perfectly pull the ball back into the run of Kobe Jones. And Kobe pops it just past Peter Rufi into the corner of the net. Feels good to be ahead for once in this game. Kobe Jones looking for work, frankly. There's been some negotiation with Major League Soccer. John Harks has done the same. Kobe did not play in three quarters of the matches 
for Coventry City, so he lost his English work permit. Jovan Kirovsky, who plays with the Manchester United Reserve team, will be coming on. The placing Ernie Stewart, who assisted on the go-ahead goal. Big hand for Ernie Stewart because he could have gone off earlier with that injury, but he stuck it out. Hello, Klaus. And created the goal. Yes. And made several good runs after the injury as well and after the goal. That's offside. And an ice pack immediately applied to that tender inside area on his left leg. Avoiding the contact with Rufi, and that's where the, the pull occurred. He's going to go on a little vacation. Ernie is. Out to California. Take some time off before Copa America. Wonder what they're thinking in Argentina if they're watching this match. The U.S. will play Argentina in their final first round match in Copa. Oh, some sting on that shot. Riedel there. And Wanu is back and wins it. 73rd minute, twice the U.S. has come from behind to tie, and then taking the lead on the Kobe Jones strike of the Boston Stewarts. Tom Dooley playing central defense today. The U.S. went with the sweeper, five defenders. Nigeria got two opportunities in the first half, capitalized on each in lightning fashion. A lead in the box. Friedel is there, then Wallace clears it off the line with his left foot. A coach, a look at that control, punched out by Friedel, the rebound is loose, and lifted up by Burns, on out, Balboa gets ahead. Abdullah, he keeps it alive. Best Nigerian flurry of the second half, and finally cleared out, and you saw the Italian league cool of Alexi Lalas there. And a brilliant save by Brad Friedel. But this one here, Lalas, it's right on the goal line. It was that close, but he was able to jam it out of danger, but Nigeria came back again. Look at this move, and a quick shot, and a tremendous reaction by Friedel to tip it away. A fine save, the best save of the game. Friedel has been remarkable today, and the leg save in the first half punches that one out, has been peppered. And that ball was hit hard. Yes. That was taking off achieving escape the velocity and he still reacted and tipped it away. Iroha services and cleaned out by Hart. U.S. clinging to a 3-2 lead in the opener of U.S. Cup 95. Colombia, Nigeria next Saturday, the USA and Mexico next Sunday. Delahi works against Hart, slips it in. Julie is there. Julie gets the foot. Now Bola controls it. Lopas has got Kobe Jones making the run against Iroha. And now Enwanu on the ball in a push against the U.S. What I'm seeing here in the U.S. defense as they defend this lead is as they drop players back you can't just bring bodies back you also have to contest for the ball and if you don't a team like nigeria can find those gaps and exploit them burns gets in there tries to get it to julie and Aguilla wins the ball back free kick nigeria in the 75th minute Abdullah, he strikes it and it's just wide of Brad Friedel. Seamus? I'm sitting here with Ernie Stewart, who came off with a slight groin pull, but Ernie, tremendous amount of work. It didn't seem to slow you down on that all-important all go-ahead goal. No, I guess when you, when you see the goal a little bit and uh, you, you have a free lane, you know, you, you never think of pain, so that made, made it a lot easier. How about you playing the second half? you rather be up top or, or working out of midfield in the transition game? It doesn't make any difference to me. If the coach wants to put me in goal, I'll go in goal. You know, it's the national team, and wherever he wants me to play, I'll play, and uh, I'll, I'll give 100%. That's just the way it should be. Okay, thanks very much. Back to you guys up top. 
there's a guy who's proud to wear his USA jersey. And no question, he can do whatever he can for this team. And it's refreshing to hear that type of attitude. Score against Columbia last year. A proven score in the Dutch first division. And the assist on the go-ahead goal. What is at this point the go-ahead goal? And a goal a game that's seen five goals scored. Burns dallied with the ball. May pay for it. Touch back with that shot. Nothing on it. And Lawless is there to put it out of trouble. <laughs> and then some. No need to mess about with it. Right that now, could be the most distinctive profile in world soccer right now. He favors the ponytail when he plays... I was watching the Inter Milan game last week at the Ponies. He'll with a headband today. Friedel is up there and it pulls it down without a problem. And I gotta believe if you're Brad Friedel and you've got Balboa and Lawless in front of you, you feel a little bit better about life. Especially when you're defending a lead late in the game, when the opposition will tend to send more high balls up into your box and play more directly. So to have those Twin Towers and even Thomas Dooley, who then also drops back as well, gives the U.S. a lot of power in terms of air strength in front of Friedel's goal. So yeah, he does. He has to feel pretty comfortable about having those guys out in front of him. I think it's Klopas playing that ball prone, and it'll be a U.S. throw-in. The U.S.A. of course taking their time now. The clock is on their side. No big hurry on the restart. In the league tables of U.S. Cup, three points for a win if the U.S. can come away with this victory today in Foxborough. Hawks has got Dooley making a run. Kirovsky who came on, Jovan Kirovsky puts it out. Good hustle by Kirovsky to, to save it from being a goal kick at least. He's got some fresh legs. The collision. Free kick for Nigeria. John Hart. Hart, he, he knows how to take care of himself. Yes. Well, anybody who scored the goal of the year in England, as he did five years ago, put it past Peter Shilton. Grew performer as Balboa, who has a goal today in his 100th cap. Three two U.S. lead. Wallace got a foot to it, and Burns bicycles it out. Settled by Karofsky. What can the youngster do with it? Uh, he showed us a little bit of skill there, bringing that ball out of the air. And he sends Klopas wide. Frankie lays it back. This is John Hart. He's got Karofsky making a run of the box. Offside as Kobe made a run on the right side. But the U.S. ain't sitting on a lead. Baseball tonight at 7.20 right after Sports Center, followed by the White Sox and the Rangers tonight. From the ballpark in Arlington, Terry Bevington, the new skipper. The Frank Thomas' team will see Juan Gonzalez. The game right after baseball tonight. Seamus? Well, it's interesting what they expect of Yovan Karofsky, this young player. They want him to be the sole attacker now and to try to break things up early as they come out on the attack because Klopas, formerly a striker, is withdrawn into the midfield where he can defend better and because also because Frank Klopas is very good at holding the ball, which is what the U.S. desperately will need in this last 10 minutes to hold on to the one-goal lead. Yovan Karofsky, who picked up as a teenager, moved to England to train on his own and has won a spot with the reserves of Man U. There's talk that they may be trying to get him a work permit, which means he would figure in their long-term plan. One of the most famous sides in the world. That assignment is a great deal of work for Karofsky by himself, but he can hold the ball just as well as Klopas can. Mike Burns with the ball. Now Klopas on it. Looks to hold it against O'Hara and calls for the dangerous play on the ground. 
But the last three times that the USA have had the ball, they've tried to go forward. They've tried to get another goal. They're not slowing it up. They're not holding possession. They're still in a very attack-minded orientation, despite the fact that, at least at the start of it, Karofsky's up there by himself. Dean Sampson took a lot of heat for that philosophy when Costa Rica won that match in the 90th minute, and the reason they were able to counterattack Costa Rica was because the U.S. was looking for a winning goal. If this result holds, and that's an if, because Nigeria, here on the 81st, 82nd minute is a very dangerous side. I think there'll be some vindication for that philosophy, at least today, against a very talented offensive team in Nigeria. Akocha, J.J. winds it up. Not dangerous at all. Stanley Cup action continues on ESPN. It is game five. It is tonight on the deuce. At 8 Eastern time, the Red Wings and the Blackhawks. Brad Friedel takes his time lining up this goal kick, but you can expect to see plenty more action right in front of Friedel over the next eight minutes or so. Nigeria known for their attacking talent and their ability to beat players one-on-one -on -one, will be throwing everything into attack. Dalajuri has to go back and recover, and he couldn't quite keep it from skittering over the touchline. 83rd minute. All Caligiuri. He has been around on the national side for 11 years. Iroha, number two. Changing with the Neguia. And Wanu pushing up. Now the U.S. on it. Sober starts out. Dooley gets a touch. There's Klopas. There's Chirovsky. Looking to spring Thomas Dooley on a run. They're not sitting on this lead. I'll tell you what. That tells the whole story. Thomas Dooley, one of the center backs for the USA today. His team has a one-goal lead with just over seven minutes left, and he's sprinting forward. He was nearly offside. In fact, he was so far into the attack. Marcelo Balboa winds it up over the top. It was... A little bit high, but on goal. Well, the U.S. still has to play Mexico and Colombia in this U.S. Cup. They are bringing, I think, much more proven commodities in terms of the players they're bringing. Look at our game summary. Three goals for the U.S. Friedel has made six saves. Nigeria, a bit of the unknown, even though you always assume they will come to attack. But if the U.S. can get three points here, a very encouraging start, but it's not over. Kobe Jones slips it. Klopas, look at that physical play, and Klopas is called for the push in the box, and he will get a card, and these cards are not insignificant, they will accumulate through this U.S. Cup tournament, and Klopas initially had held, was called for holding, and then encroached on the ensuing free kick. Now, they announced the card. He had a second. That is the second. Yellow card. He had a yellow card about 10, 12 minutes ago. In the 66th minute, he was carded. Immediately after Stewart had been carded, so the U.S. now will have to sit on a lead down a man. And Klopas can't believe it, and he will not be able to play in the next U.S. match against Mexico. Klopas fighting so hard there to try and hold possession and really help kill some of this clock to defend the lead for the USA. He lost his head for a second. He was holding the defender very obviously, and then he stood in front of the ball when the free kick was about to be taken. So the U.S. with 10 men and a one-goal lead. So if you were looking to ratchet up the drama a notch, it's happened. Here's a look at the play, and Klopas had the ball, he cuts it, he slips, so now he holds very obviously, and there he is, he's stepping in front of the ball with the Nigerian players trying to take the free kick, that's his second yellow card of the match, and he's done for today as well as the next match. Klopas leaving. Whistle at a free kick for Nigeria, not in agreement by the thousands of U.S. fans here. 
Dooley in the box watches and Caligiuri lifts it out of trouble. Less than five unofficially to play in a 3-2 U.S. lead over Nigeria. Seamus the U.S. down a man. Burns watching. Mindukwe. We got Balboa one got a um, So I guess we won't have time. The attendance this afternoon, 22,578. Considerably less than what the World Cup drew here, but a respectable crowd. Friedel is out, duly challenging as well. Friedel very aggressively coming out and connecting with that long throw in. Iniguia. Abdullahi number three. Friedel comes out to punch it to the side of the penalty area to Caligiuri. Now looking to concede the corner. And a push against Nigeria. Seamus, U.S. playing with 10 men. Well, a lot of unhappiness down here on the U.S. bench, guys, about that uh, second yellow on Klopas, especially since they thought he was fouled. But now they've got, uh, as they said before, Karofsky up top. And if the ball gets up to him, they want him to use his good ball skills and his dribbling ability to just hold it down there as much as possible and try to kill off these last three minutes. Which is what's left unofficially. And what has been a very encouraging, very entertaining, and very offensive day for the U.S. national team. It may be a little bit too early to say it, but this could go down with some other very important victories for the USA in U.S. Cup. Nigeria, Okocha, Balboa gets it, and anytime he's on the ball, you've got to hold your breath. J.J. Okocha puts it ahead for himself. Friedel is there to pull it down at the six, and he's fouled. He came down hard, but there was no doubt in his mind that he was going to come down with that ball. Complete determination. And could talking about Karofsky, very good at fielding the ball, good ball skills, holding the ball in the corner to kill the clock. So good work there by Karofsky doing it ex exactly as he was assigned. But you're right, for the USA, this is a big, important win, particularly with things not having gone that well since the World Cup overall. However, we have seen Uruguay tie with two quick goals against the U.S. recently. Yeah. Costa Rica in the 90th minute, nothing's over. But that was still a good result to tie a team of the caliber of Uruguay. But this will go down in U.S. Cup history, going back to USA. Remember, in 92, they beat, beat Ireland in Portugal, and then they tied Italy also in that U.S. Cup. And then in U.S. Cup 93, the USA beat England. So Nigeria, not quite as big of a team or as great of a team as a couple of those, but certainly a worthy opponent. Sorber slows up a coach and the foul. And this will be a dangerous free kick as exactly 90 minutes of this match have elapsed. And we're in injury time. The U.S. down a man, which is not so significant in a situation like this. 3-2 to U.S. leading. A coach to take the free kick. Watched it go high. It was a screamer. And Okocha has shown us hit the talent that brought him a contract in the German first division. He runs straight onto this ball, gets some swerve into it, but drives it over the bar, and Friedel had it totally covered. 26 shots in this game and five goals. You remember at one time the United States had an advantage in shots of 10 to 5 so the Nigerians in trying to get back into this game have really pressed forward and Friedel has been up to the task. 92nd minute, we're in injury time now. Goal by Parks and Balboa and Kobe Jones here in the second half. But the U.S. playing with 10 men in that man's stomach must be churning, wondering if he will be vindicated with the philosophy today of offensive soccer. Burned with it against Costa Rica, but now U.S. Cup. The U.S. Now this this is good stuff. 
J.J. Okocha. Friedel is there. Every touch, every possession so significant. And Friedel cradles that ball. Sampson breathes a sigh of relief for the moment. And a big win, not only for the USA, but obviously for their coach, Steve Sampson, as well. Uh, having seen the Uruguay match in Costa Rica, it's not over yet, I reiterate. We have seen too many things happen in Nigeria as more talent than either of those other two nations. But the U.S. on the ball now in the person of Cody oh, Stone that, taken down. That was a vicious call. John Jerome, the referee, not reaching for his card yet, but he's standing there as if he may. The go-ahead goal in the 67th minute on the cross from Stewart. Jones and Dooley crisscross get the ball. Now the jury. John Hart. Keep dancing, Jovan. And, and Johnny. Jovan does the quick with it. Put out for the throw-in. Now the U.S. will play Mexico next Sunday. They will play Colombia on Sunday the 25th. You'll see those games on ABC. And the U.S., if they can hold here, down a man, leading Nigeria, will leave the table with three points. Just trying to keep the ball in this corner. Little keep away. Eating up the clock. Hart. Little gamesmanship. Possession is the key here, and Hart just... Keeps possession even further with that little nice move. Nice move. Confidence shown by John Hart. And also professionalism. They know what the job to be done is only to let that clock run out. Hart, Toby Jones taken down. Free kick for the U.S. 95th minute. We've had several stoppages for injury, and so John Jerome, my referee, adding the time on. There can't be much left. Now I know how the Irish felt against the Italians in the World Cup in our opening match. Just keep it, Toby. Throw it at the corner play. There it is. That is it! Impressive, entertaining performance in Steve Sampson jubilant, relieved, and triumphant.